Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping in today. This is Patricia Stewart of Patricia Stewart Originals. I have my 8x10 gel plate <clears throat> and I'll be using my 1 inch, 2 inch speedball brayer. And I'm just going to put um, different color uh, paints. I'm starting with some golden fluid acrylics. Um, and I'm going to just have different sections of paint that I want to spread. Um, <coughs> Probably should have put these down first and get some shapes going on here. Okay, um, I'm going to try something different combining paint some thread, some mark making, and see how that goes. So first, it's not laying as flat as I want it to. This has been used so many times. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Just trying to get a shape going. And do the same here. some of those in between spaces to uh, be left on the plate because of other things that will go in between. I want to come in with my Posca pens. Do some designs as well as some mark making. Okay, so let's see. I didn't get all of it up, but that's fine because what I'm going to do now is add another color on top. My interest is in just creating an organic design. that will lend itself to another approach. And so I'm going to go over this with some 
additional paint. Using Titan Green Pail. I'm trying to pull up what's underneath. And because I don't want it to have a square edge, the shape of the plate. Sort of go around it, take off some excess paint. pick up. And I'm using a mixed media paper, which is heavy duty. It's also a watercolor paper and can be used for acrylics. So it's pretty thick. It's did get basically the rest that was on the plate. Now I want to add hmm, some more color. I'm going to go with Naples Yellow. Yes. I'm going to add a larger circle or something in a circular shape. of the plate. So I'm moving around where I want my shapes to go. have been the greatest um, color to cover. Well, let me try this with a wet wipe. Sometimes you can remove some of the color, show what's behind. enough and show a little bit of what was behind. Okay. I didn't want my blue to be hidden. Okay, I'd like to go in with a little bit um, some more color. Let's see. Okay, I'll 
going a little red. This is off the top of my head. Again, another circular. And in the meantime, while this looks like it has no direction or meaning, it will all come together a little later. just want to do one more color. I can bring out a little orange in that. I can bring a little green on top. the orange. Let's see if we can pick up just a little bit more at the bottom. Not a whole lot at the bottom. This is like a modge podge of color going on. So as you can see, I started uh, making some marks on it uh, with my Posca pen. Well, no, with my Sharpie paint pen. And with my Posca pens, I'm just going to do some shapes. circular shapes. I'll we'll use this mask. And that I started out with. And just making some marks. I will try to color it in a bit, make it a little bit more noticeable, a little thicker. I want to go back in with black and just um, make 
making some S shapes. sort of coming off the page a bit. And I have my teal Posca. And I'm going to make some smaller circles. This is just random uh, mark making. I will come in with my white Sharpie. Okay, this Sharpie isn't so great. random marks. Sometimes if I can get enough of the liquid out of the Sharpie, I can get it. some splatters. So that's basically uh, the design, but I want to add some thread uh, to it. Um, I can add some thin lines as well. I'll outline a few things in thin line. And then I will add some threading. Okay, so we see the threading. If you were looking at this um, from how I'm looking at it, you would see the subtle but nice threading. That matting is a little too big. Let me try another one. Okay, this matting is larger. And this is actually, well, the 
depending on how you want to look at it. Now this is a smaller matting, but it still gives you the picture of what's going on. And that's in white. And then if I take the black one, yeah, I think I like the black better. And so I started off with my circles, uh, using it as a guide uh, for what I was doing when I started off with these. I just needed a guide to get jump started to what I was doing. Wasn't looking for the perfect circle, but sometimes you need a jump start with what you're doing and just get it going and then after that you can do whatever you want so we have this abstract piece uh, gel prints that were pulled overlapping prints mark making right thin mark making lines thicker lines paint splatter and some needle and thread. And I think that adds something unique and different to the piece. You might want to uh, try uh, using some thread in your pieces. And if you are going to try that, I think the best um, paper is, like I said, you can use watercolor paper to pull your prints on, um, card stock, just plain white card stock, whatever size you want, is great for pulling prints. And the watercolor paper, the card stock, and what I used here was watercolor paper, but it can be used for paint and other things because it's flexible enough to make your needle holes and flexible enough so when you're sewing in and out, it's not resisting you. Um, heavier mixed media paper will resist you. It's kind of tough. Um, so that works well. And so this is a, a nice colorful piece. And um, I like the threading. Uh, that's going to be something that I'm going to it's a keeper for me to do some uh, sewing and thread. Now, as far as the thread, I use metallic threads. These were metallic. They have a shine to them. And metallic threads sometimes like to get tangled a bit. I use it on the sewing machine when I'm doing art quilts uh, with a free motion. Um, it's a wonderful uh, accent. Uh, to my art uh, and it's it's great to use in these pieces but you can use embroidery thread uh, you know you embroidery thread I think it comes three strands connected together you could use the whole strand without separating them but you want a thick enough thread uh, to be seen now, metallic thread is very, very thin, and it's, it's not as soft and smooth as regular sewing thread. Um, it's very thin, and so what I did, I, my thread was double, but I went back and did it again twice um, so that it can be seen a little bit more, because it's a thinner thread. But you could use, uh, I suggest, embroidery thread. Uh, that weight thread is, is great. And, um, yeah, try your hand at it. You know, we had the Posca pens. I had my fine um, marker, Micron pen. 
I had my Sharpie, paint pens, um, and the pull prints. So I used all the things that I've used in previous uh, tutorials, but I just added uh, the thread. Um, and you can use that thread any way you want. I punched holes in the paper where I wanted it. Uh, but you could use that thread any way you want. Suppose you had a matting. If you had your matting and you took a pencil and went around your um, artwork after all your markings and paint has been pulled, and you do a light pencil mark, and you do another double line alongside of it, you might want to do stitching around the circumference if you uh, so desire. Um, so that's, you know, that's great. You could use variegated thread, I think it's called variegated, I think. It's the multicolor thread. Um, so this is very interesting and creative and uh, the thing is to pick a color thread that will kind of stand out on top of your colors. I mean I use the gold metallic here um, and I use the blue metallic and a purple here. So whatever is your background print you will select the thread that you know, sort of would stand out on it. Um, I could have, with these circles that I did, I could have used that as my sewing line or come in along inside of it with another color. I mean, it's, it's, the possibilities are endless. So here's just another approach to uh, making the most of your gel print. And producing a nice painting. Thanks again for stopping by. Thanks to my recent subscribers. I really appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. Keep doing art. Till next time.